Hi, this is Ray Giles for the College of Westchester. We're going to explore Microsoft Excel 2010 <coughs> and learn how to build a simple general journal. Now, this project, when we're done, we will have a general journal much like what you're seeing in your accounting workbook, uh, WP page 203. The tools that we're going to need to build this spreadsheet are borders, possibly shading, and uh, the fill series. So what are the steps involved in entering information on the general journal? Well, on the first uh, page, you see here the title. What we're going to do is go to cell A1 and type the title for our application. And you'll note from earlier Excel exposure that Excel actually stores information in one cell, not two, even though it bleeds into cell B1. What you're looking at are the cell sizes. You can easily resize your cell, but what we'll do is we'll wait for now and continue to enter data, and then we'll explore formatting techniques. So let's get started entering the data. I'm going to put in cell B2, the word date, as you can see in your spreadsheet on uh, your workbook. On the column in A, we're looking to create a series of 1 through 34. So I'll type a number 1 in cell A3 and a number 2. Now what happens is we want to create a series going down. Rather than type 2 through 34, which we could do, we can easily copy down. What you want to do is actually select your bottom right hand corner of both of your cells selected together and you hold your mouse button down, copy the series down. What you're observing is Excel creating a fill series. And you'll note I'm pushing it down until I get to 34, and when I see the 34, I release. You actually have a copy of your uh, information going down. Now if you want to take a moment to practice that, we can pause and you can practice that yourself just to get, a, get caught up. And I'm going to continue to enter information across now. You see you have the word date. We're going to put description in our next column across. Post ref in uh, D2. Debit and credit. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm using the left arrow on my keyboard to just tab across. And I'll leave this on one line even though it's on two lines in your book. And you see here I'm just going across. Okay. Now, Excel has different ways to format cells. Formatting, as you can see here, a description is cut off. What I can do to format it, much like the book description, is to go between my columns. You'll notice my mouse in between the columns C and D. If I hold the mouse button down, you can also see the amount of widths and pixels. 8.43 or 64 pixels going across. Easily you can scroll across. Now it's up to you to decide the length or the width that you choose. I don't exactly have exact measurements for the book since it's actually on a page, but what you can do is make a reference to maybe more or less the same size. I'm just going across to these columns, spreading them out to go to the edge of the sheet. Now, what we have here is a date description, post reference, debit, credit, title. Okay, and even though you cannot see the borders when you are printing, you have your cell divisions here. We want to create borders that would reflect what we have in the book. This requires what we call borders and shading. If I move my mouse over to the font group, and you're looking over here, you're looking for more borders. Let's take a moment to explore the list as you click that. Notice you're clicking on the down arrow and not in the center. That will give you actually a command to issue to create a border. But if you're on the arrow, you'll able to get a drop down list. Examine this list for a minute and notice you have different preset borders for your uh, layout. Down here is where we're going to get really specific about the types of borders that we want. More specifically, how to actually draw lines and borders. So we're going to draw lines and borders, but before we do that, 
Let's choose a line style and possibly a line color. More importantly, the line style. If you notice below your general journal title, we have a double line. So let's go ahead and look at the double line selected here. And it actually is selected. With that double line, you'll notice you have a pencil. With this pencil, you're easily able to position your mouse. Now remember, it's very precise. So you want to be where you wish that border to go. And as you hold your mouse button down and drag, you'll notice that if I deviate and not let go of the mouse, I'm actually getting a box instead of a border. So I'm going to let go straight across. And a lot of this is just using the mouse correctly and driving. We'll talk about that in a couple of seconds. So why don't you go ahead and try and practice that. You can pause if you wish before we move to the next step. What we're going to do is continue to draw our double lines. Examine on page, w page WP203. Actually, you'll see the border take shape there. I'm going to drag down and create a border from my number 1 to 34 all the way down. Now if you go too far, you might run into some problems, so you just want to scroll to the bottom of the screen and use the scroll wheel on your mouse to scroll up and down. That's what I'm doing here. And you'll see I'm going to put a double double line between post ref, debit, and credit. So we'll go really slow here. And drag down. Go back to the top. Again, drag down. And back to the top. Again, drag down. Now this is a manual way of creating borders and shades. You can easily create borders and shades in another way and we'll explore that right now. Suppose I wanted to create a single line but I wanted to create that line by dragging. Well what I want to look at is the kind of lines I can create. You see this right border when I make a selection of cells, I can click this right border and it will appear. So let's click that right border. Now actually, you know what happened? I created that right border and you see that appearing on the right hand side. Wherever your selection is at the moment is where that will go. Let me undo that selection up here. I'll make my selection now to cell B, column B. I'm going to go down between column B to my 34. Actually, it's row 36, and I'll create my right border by making a click, since that was preset by dropping down this menu and clicking right border. Do it again, and it actually creates the right border. Notice the right border is a double line. If I want that to change to a single line, I'll have to override that. And let's see if I can get that to actually click and create that single line. No, it doesn't. So you know what we can do is we can go back to our line style, change the line style to a single line and draw that single line like so. So there's many ways for us to work with borders and shades. As you can see, I'm trying to just emulate what we have here in your textbook. Again, one more single line going down. And there we have a reasonable facsimile of what we have for the comprehensive problem in WP 2003. There are other techniques for shaping your document. For instance, the general journal is centered, merged and centered, so to speak. Let me connect to the merge and center. Going back to bottom shades, I'm going to actually create a shade here, if I can get out of this borders and shading. Hitting the escape key on your keyboard will allow you to get out of that pencil if you ever need to do something else. I'm going to make a merge and center of our general journal. You'll notice I made a selection in the center of our cells. By clicking the merge and center button, which actually should appear in this menu. Since you're using a smaller screen, you'll notice the merge and center is in the alignment group at the top right hand corner. You'll notice that next to your cell alignments. And I'll click that. You'll notice general journal is now centered. I'll bold it out. We need to create a semi border for the top of the general journal. Now, merging and centering allows you to select many cells together. You'll notice that's 
one cell now. With one click, I'm able to select that entire range. Naturally, I'll go back to my line style and be sure that I have the correct line, which will be this. And I'll create that border. Again, with the pencil, I can drag and draw that general journal border. Hitting escape takes me out of the general journal. So what do we have here? We actually have a general journal now with lines. Now, what we do not have are our individual lines going across. This can be achieved if you wish to enter data and have your borders going through. So each row gets an actual line. We'll do that now by sele making a selection of our cell range and clicking our bottom border. Now if I click all borders, what are we going to look for? We will see everything turn into a single border going across. This changes our layout for those double rows. I'm going to undo that and see if I can give it a bottom border for our cells. I don't think I see it. So you actually have the option of either keeping it with these double lines or creating your line rows that go across in another way. Or you can drag and draw your borders going across. Okay, so that's it for today. If you have any questions, you can get in contact with us and we'll take it to the next step for the rest of the class.